Hi friends! Welcome back to the channel. Either you're moving into a new construction house or pre-owned house, still some cleaning needs to be done. And today we'll be sharing how we cleaned and prepared our home for our moving day. We'll be cleaning and polishing the entire kitchen from polishing the kitchen sink to cleaning and polishing cooktop from sanitizing cabinets and pantry to sweeping and mopping floors and from cleaning and sealing granite top from doing a pest control and setting up essentials needed and get the house ready for the moving day Okay, well, in Texas there are a lot of bugs and I usually like to spray the house and the perimeter around the house with uh, an insecticide. So this particular uh, product here, we get it at Costco. It's called Home Defense. This box is about $20. It has two bottles and I believe they're like a gallon and a half each or something. Um, but it has two cans or two uh, bottles in here. So what I do is I empty out one of these bottles into this um, sprayer. So I got this, I think at Walmart on sale. Uh, it was years ago. So I got this on sale at Walmart. So I just basically fill it up into there, pump this up and then go around the house and around the perimeter, uh, spray. Um, do a pretty nice spray to make sure that all the bugs die and it's good I usually do a couple of times a year in the spring multiple times around the house especially probably once or twice in the house and then uh, closer towards like fall do the same thing and that keeps all the bugs out okay so let's fill up our little sprayer here and go around and do some spraying Getting the spray ready for the bugs. Yeah, we already seen a big bug here. Not even one. Um, do this first. There's bugs, huge bugs. There's a lot of bugs around here. So you gotta kind of kill them in advance. It calls um, this type of stuff calls pest control. Right, husband? Uh -huh. My husband loves doing this. Oh look, it's nice. Oh, they got us too. That, that was a, an additional. That was like an additional. So you, if you want, kind of, you can get it, but it depends where you live. If you live where there's a lot of rain, we suggest getting it. While my husband is spraying bugs, I'll share why pest control is necessary in both residential and commercial settings, especially when it comes to food. Many of the pests carry diseases and can contaminate your food by living in it, like ants, spiders, and all kinds of bugs. If you have little kids and pets, last thing you want to worry about is bugs crawling around the house looking for those cookies and chips. That's why pest control is a good solution from unwelcomed visitors. Kitchen is the place where we spend the most of our time in. That's why it's important to dedicate some time for deep cleaning it. Let's start with cooktop. Since this is a new cooktop, we're just going to polish it. But I have a video included in the description box below how to clean and polish ceramic glass cooktop. One of my favorite cleaning products is the ceramic cooktop cleaner. Apply a quarter sized amount directly to cool cooktop. Using a paper towel, bob in a circular motion starting with the white circles. Gradually decrease to smaller circles as the cleaning dries. Then using a soft cloth or microfiber cloth, buff until cooktop looks shiny. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we'll be cleaning, sealing and polishing the granite countertops. In new construction house, usually granite countertops come sealed, but if you're moving into pre-owned house, you might want to consider resealing it. The only way to know for sure if granite needs some sealing or resealing is to perform the water test. And here are some examples how sealed and unsealed granite looks like. A proper sealed granite will cause liquids to bead on the surface, and unsealed granite will absorb spills, oils, and stains. Since this is a new construction house and I wasn't sure if the granite countertops will be sealed, just to be on the safe side, I still order some online off Amazon. With the moving coupon, it turned out to be only $19.99. And the set included cleaner, sealer, and polisher. The whole process begins by cleaning the granite. Make sure to read all the instructions on the back side of the can. Before applying Rock Doctor cleaner to a large surface, test a small area just to be on a safe side. And don't forget to dust off any large debris and crumbs that may scratch stone surface before spraying the cleaner. Then spray the Rock Doctor cleaner on the surface area, then gently wipe with a clean paper towel. will be the next step. So after the granite will dry out, I will apply this one and wait 30 minutes. Before using a Rock Doctor sealer, perform a test by spraying on a small area first. Only then cover the surface evenly with the sealer including edges. The entire surface should be wet but not soaked. Allow the first coat to dry for 3-5 to five minutes then apply a second coat of Rock Doctor Sealer and let the sealer absorb into stone for about 30 minutes to an hour or until sealer is dry completely. I'm gonna spray this polisher. This polisher is simple, you just spray and wipe it down with microfiber cloth or paper towel. Rock Doctor Polish is the final step of the process. It's simple and easy to follow. Spray a thin coat of polish onto the surface. Use a clean soft cloth or microfiber cloth like this. I got these off Amazon. They are good quality and does a good job when it comes to cleaning. Using a microfiber cloth, buff the polish onto the stone in a circular motion until the surface is dry and buffed to the bright sheen. To clean microwave and oven, the best way to clean oven is to run it on a self-cleaning mode. It is recommended that the oven racks are removed while self-cleaning your oven. They can lose their sheen if left in the oven while cleaning. And once the oven racks are removed from the oven, only then run the oven on a self-cleaning mode. Since this is a new construction and the oven is still new, it is still recommended to run in a self-cleaning mode a few times before using it. Next is to clean, protect and polish kitchen sink. This Hope's Perfect Sink cleaning product makes stainless steel sink look new and shiny. And it's simple and easy to use. All the instruction is on the back side of the bottle. First, rinse the sink with faucet water. Coat the sink with Hope's Perfect Sink Cleaner using a paper towel or sponge. Scrub the sink in the direction of the stainless steel grain. And after all the scrubbing, rinse the sink with faucet water. Finally, dry the sink with a dry paper towel or cloth. And for that, I love to use my microfiber cloth. It seems to do a really good job on the shine. There are some things you don't want to forget before moving into your new house, like giving the place a good deep clean. That's when the Lysol's disinfecting wipes comes in. While your new space may have had a cleaning prior to sale, you will still want to give it a good deep cleaning. You never know what went down there before you moved in. 
And if you're trying to save some time on cleaning, hire a professional who can get it done for you in no time. All these hard to see surfaces collects lots of dust and dirt. And to make life easier for future deep clean, simply place a sheet of waxed paper on top of the hard to see surfaces instead of sticking it to the tops of the cabinets. Particles will stick to the surface of the wax paper. Then when it's time to deep clean the house, all you have to do is carefully fold the sheet up toss it and replace with a fresh one. We live in a humid climate, the dust becomes sticky over time. I normally change the wax paper on top of the cabinets every few months so just to keep a fresh and clean one on top. And to finish up the kitchen cleaning, sweep and mop the floors. Ceramic tile floors can be cleaned easily with nothing but warm water and microfiber mop, but be sure to sweep or vacuum first before mopping. Some things are best done without furniture around, like cleaning or vacuuming carpet. Carpets and rugs can make any room feel cozier, they keep your feet warm, they can add some color and style to a space, and they can even prevent furniture from scratching the floor. The only downside is keeping them clean. Moving into your new house with a new carpet, maybe it's time to make a new policy. No shoes, please. I am connecting KF5B ends to the wires. These are the wires that are coming out of the wall. I'm attaching these little pieces and then I'm going to make it look nice, you know, with six ports in here. That way I don't have all this ugly stuff just hanging out because my wife wants it to be cute. Yes. There you go. This is what I did. These. See, I'm attaching it right now. And this was done by the internet service provider guy. Uh, I wouldn't have done it this way. Um, I kind of like it when it's done this way. And I would have attached these on the inside, not on the outside, and kind of would have made it look much better. And I think it's a better design. But yeah, whatever. This is what they did. But I'm just saying that this is a better design. It's nice and sturdy. Much better than this, but whatever. The last thing that is left to do is to prepare the house for a moving day. The best way to protect floors when moving into your new place is to place a hard cover over them like cardboard or paper. It will keep floors clean and prevent from scratches. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos of moving and packing, organizing, cooking and cleaning. And I will see you in my next videos. Bye!